Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Plan Brianka, and I'd like to start this off with a little cold open. I'm going to give my friend Brianna an invitation. We're on the same side of the booth like a cute couple. Because we've got someone very important someone coming Someone very through. special coming on. <laughs> Should I read it out loud? Mm -hmm. You are formally invited to the Countess Cab... I don't know how to say that. Cabernet. You are uh, formally invited to the Countess Cabernet on February 1st, an evening of class, ass, and wine in a glass. Join me and all zero of our other friends at 54 Below. Money can't buy you class, but it can buy you the perfect evening with your pal with entertainment by Miss Luann. <laughs> and into the show we go. <laughs> If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If you're here, you know how to have a good time. And we're ready to do that and help you out with pirate water. Pirate water is a ready-to-go 10% malt beverage. Ready to go in a can, like I said, ready to go twice. That's three times now. The four flavors that they got going on is Margarita, Sex on the Beach, Bahama Mama, and Miami Vice. If you want to get yours today, you can go to drinkpiratewater.com, order it on GoPuff, or get it at Walmart. Let's get back to the show. Okay, guys, welcome back to Plan Brian Cut. We have one of the guests that we've been trying to get forever. It's like Very one time. of our top fives. We're obsessed with you. Oh, we have oh Luann God, here. Thank you, girls. And you are like our reality TV icon. We've been watching you for, I don't even... 15 know. years at least. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you are amazing, and we're so excited to have you. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. It's been a, it's been a while, so it's nice to be back on this couch with you, ladies. Oh, yeah. welcome. I know. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I saw you went to Madonna last night. How you feeling? I'm feeling Giovanni. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> She was so good. Yeah. I, I can't even. It's, you know, she's such an icon and an inspiration. I mean, uh, it was incredible. But what I noticed was really crazy. A lot of people were not dancing. I was like, I was standing up and dancing. How could you not dance to the, Madonna? I know, right? It was like 75%, I would say, of the audience were just kind of like bopping their heads. And I was like, what are they doing? And I was dancing up a storm because, you know, you gotta pop how can your you not dance to Madonna? to Madonna? I would expect nothing less from you. Come on now. You <laughs> she Madonna, started on time. Oh, did she really? She started it. So I was at the Glam Awards last night. Mm -hmm. Um, and we ran over there and we didn't get there till 1030. And of course, the one night that we're late, she mm. starts on time. <laughs> she started oh, at 10. On. But anyway, we had a great time. Wait, uh, what are the Glam Awards? The Glam Awards are for the best of the best of New York City nightlife. Oh. The so hell? the best queens, no, the best, you know, <laughs> clubs, the best, um, you know, dancers, the best queens. Oh. It was amazing. Oh, oh what an honor to be able to go. Yeah, my friend Ariel uh, Patiz is, um, Polites, I should say, Polites, um, was the mayor of nightlife basically oh wow um and now she handed off the baton to somebody else so i was there to kind of introduce her mm -hmm. and then she introduced the new mayor of nightlife oh amazing. there is a mayor of nightlife that looks after um what yeah that looks after and supports the the um the city's nightlife i oh, never wow. knew that i no. didn't know it either that's oh why gosh. i love new york city even more there is a mayor for nightlife Wow. That's incredible. Are you still <laughs> super involved in nightlife? Do you go out all the time? Well, cabaret is my nightlife. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I love, I love dancing. Mm. I love uh, music, obviously. And I love uh, supper clubs and cabaret. That's why I love cabarets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a really relaxed, engaging, immersive experience, right? Because mm -hmm. it's about the performer and about her stories or his stories and, um, and and the music that they love to sing, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love cabaret. We're trying to level up a little bit. We're into like the dirty nightclubs where it's sweaty and they're underground. And it's well, those are good too, you know. <laughs> after midnight, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Depends um, where you go. <laughs> but you know, and that's why I love Fifty Four Below. That's where I started my cabaret career. Um, so you girls have to come. I'll be uh, uh, yeah. performing we'll um, be January thirty first. <gasps> Uh, February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at 54 January Below. 31st. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, you have to come. You're going to love it. It's it's really a ride through uh, pop culture, cabaret, and comedy. Oh, uh, it, it's immersive. It is, you know, I do a Q&A with the audience. Um, you really feel like you're a part of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, my fans get dressed. They wear their, you know, their best dresses and their, oh. their statement necklaces, mm -hmm. you know, which is such a huge nod to me. Mm -hmm. And, and the fans are connected because mm -hmm. they're connected because of the, all the shows that I do and housewives and uh, crappy Lake, let's not forget. <laughs> and so I talk about crappy Lake in the show, things you don't want to see on the show. Um, and so 
they know each other already mm -hmm. from um, having the same, you know, a love affair with uh, housewives, etc. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they often go out together and hang out together and become friends. Oh, like it's a, a community. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. a community. It's a Bravo community. And I, I, I love that. And they're so supportive. I always say I could trip and fall and they would say, that was so elegant, Countess. <laughs> That's what we say at our show. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, right? People just laugh so, and clap because yeah, they love yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I work really hard on my show. People come and they don't know what to expect. I always say they come in a Toyota and they drive out in a Rolls Royce because <laughs> I you know I put on a great show I have a new director Richard J Alexander who has directed you know um, Bette Midler Kristen Chenoweth Barbara Streisand just to name oh, a few wow. he's an icon in the business so I feel very lucky and Brian Nash is my musical director who's amazing and um, I've got a great team and I have the best time so you are going to love it because it is a party Hell I'm yeah. So it is a party. Before you walked in, I did gift Brianna a ticket for both of us to go. So no. I'm so excited that we're <laughs> Really? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, no. I'm so happy right. you girls are coming. I'm we're so pumped. excited. Did you start performing as a child? Where did this come from? You know, from? I did I did really because I grew up one of seven children, so it was always look at me, look oh, at me, you're look at me. Fighting for that. So always fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always say my family prepared me for housewives because you have to navigate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you can't go too far left, you can't go too far right, you gotta kinda you know, and figure out how to to kind of work around people. And um, so it prepared me for housewives and also prepared me um, in the way that I was always kind of, you know, jumping up and down for attention, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, I started modeling and then uh, moved to Europe and, you know, that's when I married the Count. And um, and then I was, you know, working in Italian television for a time in, in Milan. I used to work for Berlusconi, which a lot of people don't know. I've had so many lives. lives. <laughs> I mean, I started as a nurse in Connecticut. What? That's where I grew up. And then I got scouted to be a model in New York. And that's really when my life changed. I was like... What At like 23, I had never been to New York, and I grew up in Connecticut. So, oh, wow. What? Yeah, I tell that story, too, and then I go into dreams from um, Stevie Nicks. Where did they, dreams how did they find you? Where did they scout you? Uh, well, um, I got asked by a girl that used to work with me because I was a nurse at the time and mm -hmm. she was a nurse's aide and she said, I'm going into the Miss Connecticut beauty pageant, but I won't go unless you come with me. So mm -hmm. it was like... I knew she wouldn't go, mm -hmm. so I said, "You know what? I will go with you because I loved her, and I mm -hmm. and I did that out of uh, you know purely uh, from my heart. And you know, when you do things from your heart, it's interesting. Mm. You, you get rewarded. Oh, you somehow. do. Yeah. You just do. And so there was a scout there, and he said, "You can make a lot of money in New York as a model." And I was like, "Me? You know?" I was like, <laughs> I'm "Just a nurse. Oh, well, you know, I'm just a nurse with big hair in the '80s, and uh, <laughs> I did, had no idea how pageantry worked. I didn't place. I didn't do well in the pageant, but." being there got me scouted to be a model in new york and of wow. course then consequently i would move to europe so oh, wow. wow maybe it's too late to say happy new year but it's not too late for new year's wireless savings with visible get a one-line wireless plan from visible for 20 dollars a month for 24 months with code visible 24 call it a two-year resolution <laughs> i see what you did there visible with visible get a one-line wireless plan just 20 dollars a month for 24 months unlimited 5g data powered by verizon no annual contracts use code visible 24 don't miss out offer ends january 31st switch now to visible.com don't miss the new year savings hurry ends january 31st use code visible 24 don't miss out offer ends january 31st switch now at visible.com new members only promotional rate with service on visible plan for additional terms and network management practices see visible.com yeah. And then you come back and you live in New York and you're on Housewives. What was it like getting the call? Were you terrified to go on or you were like, this is it. I want to do well, it. Well, listen, you have to remember, reality was new when I started. Mm -hmm. You know, there was only Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, really, and mm -hmm. Big Brother kind of reality. So having worked in television on that side, um, I wanted to s figure out if I'd like reality. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, oh, I get to be me and I get to like, that. that's it. Okay, I mm -hmm. can do that. And you know, it really, I, I met Jill Zarin at a party out in the Hamptons, and that's how it happened. It really came to me through Jill. Mm. Uh, um, and Jill said, oh, you got to meet the producers. I'm doing the show. And I met them, and that was it. Mm. That was it. The rest is history. Yeah. 
Wait, when it came to um, reality TV and since it was so nuanced, did you ever find yourself, did they ever try to change you and make you more into a character or were they able to just let you be yourself? Well, of course, through editing. You yeah. Know, they, they didn't miss an opportunity where Countess was brought up. You know mm. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they ran with the Countess thing. And what people don't know is that, you know, I grew up in a small town. I'm down to earth. You've watched Crappy Lake. Mm -hmm. I think you understand a little bit more about me. And, um, you know, you only get a glimpse into my life on Housewives and people mm -hmm. think that they know me, but they really don't. I mean, I am down to earth and, you know, I was a nurse. I grew up in a big family. So, um, but of course, through editing, et cetera, mm -hmm. they're building characters. Of course. Of course. You know, was if you hard? can't be cool, you can't be with the Countess. <laughs> oh my God, I'm just I love thinking it, that cool, cool, came up, <laughs> cool came up a while ago. Before be cool, don't be like, oh, I'm cool. Yeah. I was already talking about cool before that. So <laughs> I just realized that. Um, yeah, of course, it's an edited, produced mm -hmm. TV show. Mm -hmm. Now, we really produce it ourselves for the most part because it's really based about our life, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, listen, they can't edit what you don't give them. Yeah, that's this true. is true. So, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, we have to be careful in that way because, um, you know, you obviously want to, you know, come off well. and But, you know, housewives, I've had a lot of ups and downs. People mm -hmm. has, have seen me you know, go from a high to the absolute low and then go back to high building my, you know, my career back in terms of cabaret because that's really what I love to do. Mm -hmm. I, you asked before if I grew up singing. Yeah. I really kind of did, but, you know, I was singing Stevie Nicks, you know, and dreaming of a bigger life. And I never dreamed, though, that I would be playing myself mm -hmm. on television. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Who would have thought? An option, yeah. It wasn't an option. Yeah. I mean, no, we're talking about, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. And, now uh, it's the only thing keeping there television was no, alive. Yeah, <laughs> there was no reality TV at that point, really not much. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, dove in head first, didn't mm -hmm. know what to expect. And, you know, like you said, the rest is history. Wow. Was it when you first started when the producers kind of ran with editing and created the Countess, the character, was it hard for you to be like, shit, people aren't really seeing who I am? Or Well, yeah, like, I mean, I like it? you know, it's like that famous scene where I'm ordering a pizza. Mm -hmm. I say, my name's Luann. They couldn't figure out Luann. They couldn't figure out to spell Della Saps, which is even <laughs> harder. So I'm like, Countess. Figuring they, they would know who that, what that is. You know, I mean, what is a Countess? I mean, I thought the only Countess I knew about before I met my husband was Count Dracula. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know anything about Countesses. <laughs> you know, so, um, and of course they use that. Mm -hmm. um, they use the, the scene where, you know, I asked the guy to call me Mrs. Della Saps because mm -hmm. that's what I was used to in Europe. You know, I yeah. was married to a French aristocrat. That's just how I was rolling, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and of course they use that mm -hmm. to make me look like the snobby countess. Mm -hmm. And I'm far from that. Yeah, I can tell. That, from, I'm yeah. sitting yeah. with you for five As minutes. As you can tell. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Five minutes, you know me, you know, much better than you probably know me on the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so wild. when it comes to your cabaret, that, that's how you say it? Cabaret. Cabaret. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not in touch with the, the arts just yet. but um, <laughs> Oh, you will be, Grace. I, I cannot wait. <laughs> I cannot February wait. First. It's, uh, my little girl self has always wanted to go to a cabaret. I just didn't know what it was. We could dress up. <laughs> right. Well, cabaret up. is really, you know, um, it's really about the, the performer's story mm -hmm. and their in their life and um often often that's the case you know listen you have all the greats of cabaret you know bet midler w was discovered doing cabaret you know by clive davis mm -hmm. um you know uh liza minnelli cheetah well, rivera liza minnelli i've got great liza minnelli <laughs> stories minnelli. i talk liza minnelli stories i talk about that too in the show so it's really you know kind of a walk through my experience mm -hmm. um and of course a lot of pop culture talking about the shows and what you know how that goes down and mm -hmm. so you're really sitting on my living room couch and fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a good ride <laughs> oh that's phenomenal so what what kind of um songs do you tend to sing and, and is it always the same no no okay. no 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 so i'm do right now i'm doing in new york i'm doing countess cabaret um and then i have a new tour coming up which is inspired by my fans because i always get asked during my q a who would I marry? Who would I f and who would I kill? Mm, love so, a good, but good but time and time again, and I've done hundreds of cabaret shows now, and without a doubt, I get asked that question. So, mm. it was my inspiration for the new tour because who do we want to marry? I know. Who do we want to f and who do we want to get rid of? Because mm -hmm. we're not killing anybody. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, how do you get out of a bad date? You know, so 
it's going to be that show I'm really excited about. I'm creating it right now because what I do is I pick my music and then I back it up with stories. Like, why did I pick that song? Oh, mm-hmm. cool. Right? So that's how I work and I kind of work backwards. I, the music is most important to me. And then I figure out how am I going to get into that song? Mm-hmm. For example, you know, I sing um, a David Bowie song in my show. Um, oh my God, what is the song? I'm Let's dance. Let's dance. Thank <laughs> you. I've got so much music going on in my head right now because I'm creating a new show, but um, I'll, I'll do Let's Dance. And, and my director goes, do you have a story about David Bowie? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me think about that. And I go, oh my God, my girlfriend used to rent his house in Mystique. And she had, she had a dinner party and she goes, Mick Jagger's coming. And I'm like, come on. No, he's not. <laughs> well, sure enough, Mick Jagger walks in. There he is. She sits him right next to me. And... She starts um, bragging about how I'm a recording artist and puts oh. on Chic Say La Vie. I yes. felt like crawling oh under the oh table, my God. <laughs> sitting next to Mick Jagger. And Mick Jagger stands up. That's what he did. Guess what he does? He stands up and he goes, do you want to dance? I'm like, hell yeah. And you have to remember, this is happening in David Bowie's house. Oh, my goodness. And then, boom, what? This is let's like- dance. Oh. Put on your red oh shoes my. and dance. So, so this is how I get into my songs. It's very personal. And um, and there's a lot of great stories to be heard. Well, I mean, that story, I mean, to even <laughs> have that song. <laughs> that's that crazy. Is, that's how good it is. So you dance with Mick Jagger. Did you, did you do more than dance? I know. Is he married? Yeah, we definitely smoked a joint for sure. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> and you I call you. And I called everyone I know. I, my <laughs> lips to. were on a doobie because we called them doobies back then. Doobies way better than anything doobie. else. We yeah. smoked, I smoked a doobie with Mick Jagger. My brother was like, no way! They were so oh jealous. God, I would call yeah. everyone too. That's incredible. <laughs> Sounds like a Mad Lib. <laughs> oh, I, and like when I first got to New York, oh, write this down. Roger. When I first got to New York, I was modeling and, you know, I was trying to make Ed's meet. I wasn't a big at model, you know, but I was you know, I was working and then I was supporting myself part time as a nurse because mm-hmm. I'm a nurse. Right. So I was working per diem in New York. Um, and oh, my gosh, I just forgot where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to make ends meet. We're mm-hmm. a nurse. We're a. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, so then okay, I'm out. She's back. <laughs> then I'm out. It's kind of early. It's kind of early. She never left. Yeah, she never left. So I'm out and about, and I meet this really handsome guy, and we start dating. And um, and I'm walking down the street with him one day, and everyone's pulling him over and asking him for autographs. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, are you famous? And he goes, yeah, I'm kind of on the Mets. It was Keith Hernandez. Oh, my God. <laughs> you didn't know? <laughs> no. I oh, don't, my God. Listen, I'm from Connecticut. I, you know, I'm a nurse. I moved to New York. I'm not watching sports. But usually it's like, hey, what do you do for no, work? No, no, <laughs> no. You know what? I you guys oh, are just He was so out. handsome. <laughs> and we just were, yeah, we made out. And then we dated for like four months. Oh, and, my gosh. Yeah, and I had no idea. And that's what he loved about me. I didn't know he was famous. Mm-hmm. And that that he loved. You so. just were attracted to him. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. He was so hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look up the picture. Picture of Keith Hernandez. Let me tell you that. Hot. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to pull that up. Wait, the gonna... Keith Hernandez story is a good one. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh my god! Imagine um, you're just dating a famous guy and you don't know. I know, no idea. <laughs> it's kind of probably better off that way. Sometimes. Totally. He was thrilled oh, that I didn't know. He was a cutie. He's, look, no, he, yeah, that's older. But when he was, oh, he was hot. The, Look at him in his, oh, his rash going on. Oh my God, that's him and me. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my gosh. Right on your <laughs> <laughs> wow. have, you, have you talked to him? Like ever? I see him in the Hamptons. He actually lives in the Hamptons, so I see him in the Hamptons. <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. So when it comes to men, you you are you are um, you know um, wild wildly in love with men, right? Yes, of course. Yes, I love men. I mean, I grew up with four older brothers, mm-hmm. so I think that's mm-hmm. why I'm, I feel very comfortable with men. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to walk up to them. I'm big on flirting, as you've seen on Ultimate Girls Trip. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you're shark so good attack at in it. the water. Your confidence just radiates. It's something I really aspire to you be You have like. the shoulders. Oh. You have the shoulders when you flirt. Well, you got to have swag. I mean, you know, um, you have to have confidence. I just feel like, you know, if you don't think you're hot, nobody else will. That's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. So you got to lead with that, yeah. and lead with your heart. You know, people just want to be loved. Yeah. Is really it. You know, so compliments go a long way. Mm-hmm. Charm. You know, um, I always say to girls, you know, drop something in the bank. If you think a guy's hot in the bank when you're a Chase Bank or something, you know, drop a twenty. Believe me, somebody's mm-hmm. going to stop and pick it up. Or, but you have to drop it next to the guy you like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not just some like, rando because he'll take the, right the money bank. and run. <laughs> 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 so do you have do you have a type or you know I, I I you know I do and I don't meaning um I love tall dark and handsome I mm-hmm. love European men I love Latin mm-hmm. men 
Um, I married an American. Um, that didn't work out too well, did it? <laughs> um, but but um, I don't really. I mean, I just, I like boyish, like Hugh Grant kind of mm -hmm. boyish. Ooh, okay. That's you know, Jacques thing. is kind of boyish, my French boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Listen, I married a Frenchman, then I dated Jacques for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Right, so I kind of you swing like towards European men or, or she likes Latin. Men imported. Well, I like men that are not afraid to get all, you know, up into your stuff. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. A lot like, of men are scared of that. Well, who come on to you? You know, who just yeah. you know, they look at you a certain way. Mm -hmm. They'll touch your arm or yeah. they'll reach over the table to grab your hand. You know what I mean? I like the touchy feely guys who Me are too. not afraid of their sexuality. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're vocal about it. And they're vocal about it, and they show it to you, mm -hmm. and. You know, it's part of seduction. It's the art of seduction. Mm -hmm. Where she's 25, I'm 24. What is your best dating advice for us, like in our early 20s or mid 20s? I guess. I mean, well, I, ju I just kind of talked about it, which is, you know, don't be afraid to walk up to somebody and mm -hmm. say hello. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, say you know, um, say something endearing and charming. Um, flirt with the eyes. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. There we go. Like let Eyes somebody know that mm -hmm. let somebody know because you we have big energies right we have a big force field of energy mm -hmm. right so if you put it out there which is just the way you act and the way you look and the way you kind of flirt I mean kind of gives out the vibe mm -hmm. that you're interested mm -hmm. I mean people have to know you're interested in them first of all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are very coy, mm -hmm. like they like somebody. I understand that because it takes, I think it takes time also to work those skills. Yes. Like how do I get, get over courage. this coyness mm -hmm. and get, get up the courage to, because guess what? They can only say no or mm -hmm. say, look, you know, and at least you tried. It's better than like, shit, I should have done that. For yeah. years being like I that I should have walked up yeah. to that guy, mm -hmm. you know, and God knows I've done it myself. Um, and I, oh, I'm always, you know, um, happier in the fact that at least I went for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it didn't work out, at least I went for it. I tried. Yeah. And that's the best you can do is like, you know, putting the vibe out there and, and actually flirting like, you know. Um, like I do on all my trips yeah. you know, such a good with the thing. fire department really <laughs> in Crappy Lake. I don't know if you guys have seen Crappy Lake. Something about firemen, though. Oh, firemen are, are always, you know. New York firemen? Well, I mean, they're it's just out there to, to save sexy. people and save lives, and there's something very they're attractive sweaty. about a man in uniform, you know. I it is, a man in a uniform. A man I don't, in I don't uniform, know what yeah. kind Well, because it it, it's powerful, and I think, you know, I think people are attracted to powerful people with confidence. And yes. So I think, you know, um, that's those are my biggest tips, which is mm -hmm. if you don't think you're great, nobody else is going to think you're great. So you have to think highly of yourself and talk positive, positively to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, what you put out in the universe, I have to do a book about this. What you put in the I universe. I would read that right away. Yeah, right? Like <laughs> what, you uh, what you put here? out there in the universe, meaning how you speak to yourself and how you speak to others really matters, mm -hmm. you know, and we're hard on ourselves, Yeah. you know, so it's all about you know, being good to ourselves and kind to ourselves mm -hmm. and um, and just living in the moment and not thinking about, oh, I did that last yesterday and oh God, I should have done that. No, that moment's over. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to move forward. And that's how I try to roll. It's like I try not to think about, you know, um, am I gonna have the best show in Los, Los Angeles? Yes, I am, right? Mm -hmm. And that's as far as it goes. I'm, I try not to, you know, worry about the show mm -hmm. and, you know, um, because it's cabaret. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always say I could trip and fall and people would say that's so elegant. Yeah. Just, you know? <laughs> um, because I'm human, you know, yeah. and everybody, you know, can flub or make a mistake or whatever. It's about how you pick yourself up mm -hmm. and including cabaret. Yeah. You know, if I miss a beat, I mean, I don't miss a beat. Meaning if I miss a word or whatever, I don't <laughs> yeah. miss a beat. Yeah. You know, you never know what happened. <laughs> exactly. You know, just got to keep it moving. Keep and moving. Right. And, you know, if you trip and fall, make it part of the dance. Mm -hmm. Then do the warm or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be still elegant, like everyone says. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Plan Bree listeners, I'm here to tell you there's no reason to panic the next time you're searching for the perfect gift. Now you can use Gift Mode on Etsy. Gift Mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone or any occasion. Now it's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all people in your life, like the pickballer, the BFF, the foodie, the artist, or the pasta lover. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there's something for everyone on Etsy. With Gift Mode on Etsy, I can search hundreds of gifting personas and find so many incredible items. I gotta tell you guys, I didn't know what to get my father for Christmas. I had no idea. 
I mean, like we said, what do you what do you get a man for Christmas? You like how I just switched switched voices back to like a you know like a deep thing because I'm thinking about my Boston father. Anywho, uh, since he is a Boston father, I, I I knew I needed I needed to get him uh, something to do with Boston sports. All right, so you, I got him a custom watch. Patriots, Bruins, Red Sox, Celtics, customed watch, and he adored it. All from Etsy. So, uh, if you need to find the perfect gift, don't panic. Try gift mode on Etsy now. Are yeah. there any new men in the horizons? You know, I'm dating right now. I'm so busy with my career and performing and um, got a new, some new projects on the horizon, you know, in terms of television. Um, I'd like to, you know, get that dating show up and running mm-hmm. for sure because I think there's a need for that. You know, people with... COVID and cell phones and all that have, have really lost the art of communication. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to a bar now and everybody's on their cell phones instead of engaging with people. Um, so I think there's a real need for that, you know, like charm school again and learning how to use our skills mm-hmm. to flirt and to engage with people. Um, I think that's fallen to the wayside in the in the era of social media. And, yeah. yeah, you've done such an amazing job. I think you're like an inspiration to a lot of women in the fact that after your divorce, some mm. women just get so crushed and mm. they don't know how to bounce back. Here you are, your career's taking off, you're doing all the things, you're so confident. It's so inspiring to other women that go through breakups or divorces. You're like a powerhouse. Oh, well, thank you, honey. But, you know, listen, it takes uh, I think it takes a tremendous amount of courage just, you know, like when I started Cabaret. Not only it's my first Cabaret show, but it was being filmed for The Housewives. I don't know if you it's remember terrifying. that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I, I, I was in the dressing room. I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. My makeup artist. <laughs> she goes, Lou, you're made for this. You're going to be fine. Just get out there and do it. You know, and, and it's true. You know, after I get out there for a couple of minutes, I'm just, you know, you have to take me off with a hook. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really enjoy it. And I think people can see that. I mean, when you come to my show, you'll see. I mean, mm-hmm. I just have a good time. Um, and then otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. yeah. Right. I really enjoy what I do. Um, and it does take courage and guts, but you know, um, (laughs) you know, you jump on the train or the train leaves without you. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to learn to go with your gut, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, my first husband, I get married after two weeks and I have two kids with him married 17 years Mm -hmm. and we, you know, two weeks later. So you can't be afraid to take a chance. I think a lot of people are, you know, can be afraid to take a chance to do something that is out of their comfort zone. When it makes you uncomfortable, run towards it. Mm. Run. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, You're packed full of good advice. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to write that book. I know, and I have to, you know, I'm going to listen to this podcast (laughs) so I can keep notes. Yeah, you can (laughs) make an e-book, basically Mm -hmm. an audio book already. Yeah, Yeah, that was just a short little excerpt from (laughs) from me. I don't know. (laughs) Right off the dome. (laughs) How how was um filming Girls Trip? Was that fun to be back with everyone? Oh, it was so much fun. You know, uh, it was fun to be back with, you know, Dorinda and Ramona mm-hmm. and Sonia Rita <laughs> and uh, be back again with Kelly, who we, ha- we haven't seen on TV for 10 years. I know. That was, that was shocking. Right. And Kristen Takeman, right? Um, and, yeah, we had a good time. You know, there was the right amount of drama. You mm-hmm. know, I think some of these franchises can get really dark. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted this to be light and funny and... And I think we we pulled it off. We you know we pu- peeled back that fourth wall and talked about the past. They show a lot of flashbacks, which I love. Mm-hmm, me too. Because people love history. It's like yeah. oh my god, I remember that or mm-hmm. you know. And um, so you know the show to my I mean I thought it was it's a good show, mm-hmm. but people are really loving it, and that makes me happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. Thank you. It feels Thank like you. a vacation to watch. Yes. You're just like, oh, yeah, just like I'm chilling out. Yeah, and St. No Bart's really back screaming. in the house of the pirate. No. <laughs> and I found pirate. myself another one, didn't I? Mm-hmm. She's not quite the pirate, but you know what? Hot. <laughs> That's all, all that really matters. matters. Hot. <laughs> but a lot of people don't realize, like, these are trips and they're shows, like, of a vacation. But does it actually feel like vacation when you're there? It did to me. It did? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. That's huge. Yeah, no, I had a great time. You know, it's a lot of work. We yeah. filmed from morning till night. Mm-hmm. Um, we're only there a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is that's, crazy. That's what we were wondering, yeah. <clears throat> oh, and that landing. Oh, my God, the landing in St. Bart's <laughs> kills me every time. But, um, but yeah, it was only a week. Okay. So, you know, we filmed a lot. Um, and, you know, we did we did have a great time, and I think that shows, you know. Yeah, of course. You know, we dealt dive into you know story you know crazy scary island with kelly mm-hmm. and she, then she calls herself an action verb i'm like what what <laughs> i mean and then we talk about the pretty kitty of sonia who doesn't wear her underwear 
you know, I was. She yeah. is a nudist. Yeah. She isn't. She loves to go naked. And I want to be um, like that. I want to be like that. Yes. Like, oh, remember we took on. off her tops and let her boobs go in the. Oh wind? Yes. yes, beautiful. <laughs> a beautiful. You know who did that to me? A girlfriend in Saint Tropez when I was in the south of France. One time she goes after dinner. She goes, "Allez-y, on promenade dans les dans les uh, dans les arbres, uh, tout nude." So. Uh, we're going to walk in the trees, totally naked, with our, our breasts blowing in the air. Wow. The wind blowing. And I said to you, how freeing is that? That's tough. What nobody is. around. Nobody around, of course. There were like four girls naked in the forest in Saint Tropez. <laughs> <laughs> but I never forgot that moment. Yeah. And so we were in St. Bart's. I was like, let's do it, girls. And they loved it. <laughs> That's fun. I think Dorinda really jumped into the water also. She not only <laughs> had the wind, she had floaters, you know. <laughs> Keeping her up. <laughs> she had her own noodle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. <laughs> like Ramona. <laughs> Today we've got something truly special for all renters and landlords out there. Paying rent is something we all have to do. And let's be honest, it can sometimes be a bit of a hassle. But what if there was a way to make it all easier, more straightforward, and even beneficial from your financial future? Introducing RentApp, the ultimate tool for renters everywhere. RentApp takes the hassle out of paying rent by depositing your payments directly into your landlord's bank account. No more trips to the ATM, no more checks to mail, and no more managing balances in multiple apps. Just simple, direct transactions that make life easier for both you and your landlord. There are no fees, no weekly limits. That's right, Rent App is completely free for you to use. No need for your landlord to create an account. It's completely free for them too. So why wait? Head to the App Store and download Rent App today and follow Rent App at Rent App on Instagram and Twitter. And for our listeners, we've got an exclusive deal. Go to rent.app slash barstool to get $50 cash back on your first rent payment. And if you're a landlord, go to rent.app slash landlord to get paid on time and without hassle. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> I hate I hate to um, even bring it up because I feel like a lot of people ask this. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. Mm. How do you feel about the new season of, um, I like those girls. I do. I like those girls. I think it takes time to get used to new people Mm -hmm. like it does. Yeah. I mean, it's only natural. We've been on the show for what, 15 years or so. So, um, you know, they're different. They're Mm -hmm. not us. Yes. That's Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. I think Uh, it's like you have to. Yeah. We have so much history. We actually are really old friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that shines. I think that's a big difference. When you have a new cast and new people that don't really are not really friends i think that's always a hurdle to get over but you know them filming for this amount of time now Mm -hmm. they've become friends i mean now they're tight so you know or they're not i you know um so i you know i actually i didn't watch all of it i watched some of the episodes and i thought they were you know beautiful women successful in their own right Mm -hmm. um you know um i see bren um oh wait bren is coming to who's coming to my show bren jenna lyons um oh they're coming to my cabaret Oh, Aaron and Uber oh, are coming. Ooh, Jen fun. Lyons is in Europe, darling. <laughs> She's not going to be around, but uh, Uber's coming. Do you two hang out? Do you hang no, out? No, you know, I them? didn't know Jen Lyons from before, but I met, met her at um, uh, the Upfronts, I think it was, and um, we had a conversation, and I liked her a lot. Okay. I, I, but all my friends know her. I just never met her, which is odd. Oh. Yeah. But oh, anyway, I like the girls. Circles. We and I just saw them all at BravoCon too. Oh yes, okay. So so yeah, Uba's coming and yeah, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Do you um do you like doing BravoCon, or is it? I like love BravoCon. It's so great. No, right. no, I love the fans. You yeah. know, I really am a. I love the fans. I love how much, you know, they just love you know the Bravo universe. Mm-hmm. Um, they love it so. They love it so much. much. They are just. I mean, I get inc- it. Incredible yeah. and. Um, you know, and it's great to see all the Bravo celebrities. For mm-hmm. me personally, you know, I was with the Jason from Below Deck. <laughs> and oh, yeah, what's your favorite uh, Bravo shows? Um, well, I like Below Deck. I like Southern Charm. Mm. Um, I like Traders, which is a new show, f- right, for Peacock. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah, heard yeah. about Traders? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, people are saying, you have to get on Traders. You have to get on Traders. <laughs> get her um, on Traders. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I've watched Scripted, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I love Billions. Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Succession, mm-hmm. you know, all those shows. But, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll catch Bravo shows. And, of course, the Beverly Hills Housewives and mm-hmm. certain franchises like Miami. Mary Soul is a good friend. And mm-hmm. Alexa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll catch up. You know, I'll do a little surfing on Bravo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. When you have time. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> I the thing. Know. <laughs> on flights, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And I watched The Golden Bachelor. 
um, a oh, little I bit of that. that. That's the first season. Of I know. Bachelor I, I want to do a dating show like that. I you mean, should. who can charm the socks off of the countess? That would I mean, be that incredible. Be so good. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> right? <laughs> it's gonna perfect. take a special yeah, but man. a little bit younger. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like forty to sixty, and mm-hmm. not seventy to kind of almost eighty. Which is there's a need for that as well. But mm-hmm. I think that there is the middle, it's every right down the middle, because it's an epidemic of women. You know, even the housewives mm-hmm. who are single, mm-hmm. you know, who have been married, they had their children, mm-hmm. right? So it's a different time of life. There's so much more depth, I think, than mm-hmm. like a bachelor kind of show, like the Young Bachelor show, where there's not a lot of life experience there. So mm-hmm. I just feel like, you know, you know, there's kids involved, there's ex-husbands involved, yeah, you know, there's spicier. old boyfriends. It's, it's real, spicy, yeah. it's real, you know, there's real, you know, stories there, right. I think. It feels you know? more real because there's so much involved. Exactly. Like there's so much more to, to it than just dating, you know. Yeah, or being famous on a show. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's a great idea. I'd yeah. watch that. And it's, it's yeah. not really talked about, that that second part of your life where you're looking for a second love. Second love. So love yeah. the second love time love around. For me, it's going to be the third because three times a charm. But Exactly. I'm a hopeless romantic, so... But I'm not, like, out there looking. Well, I am flirting and looking, but I'm not, like, I'm happy yeah, being you're single. Yeah, window shopping. Yeah, I'm window shopping, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. It's that easy. Mm-hmm. But I'm happy being single, you know? <laughs> yeah, It's not like course. I'm going, oh, woe is me, I don't have a boyfriend. No. But I do think 2024 is my year for romance. Oh, I, I feel that. Me too. I feel it you feel it? You yeah, feel my feel vibe? That. It's your year awesome. for romance, too. Well, not to take you away from your shine, but yes, it is also my year for romance. Good. It's her yes. year. Yes. It's your year. <laughs> Good. I've, um, When's your birthday? Um, October 27th. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, my God. I don't oh. really... My son Scorpio, is November though. twenty, uh, September twenty seventh. Well, October so- is Victoria's <laughs> twenty second. Oh my God, he's twenty seven. <gasps> Perfect. Oh my God, what's he he's doing? He's so. Later? Oh wait, go to Noel <laughs> de la Sabs and check out his Instagram. His art is off the hook. Off he's art. my oh Picasso. My <clears throat> he's my little Picasso. He's an amazing painter. Both my kids are incredible artists. He can Victoria's be his well. muse. Oh. Yes. Can I, be, can I be your son's muse? Yes. <laughs> you might have to get naked, but that's okay. No, I'm joking. I'll work on that. that. Work I'm on joking. That. He doesn't, he doesn't do nudes. No, he doesn't do nudes. I'll be his little French girl. Uh, well, check out his page. No, seriously. Check out his Instagram. You're I would love like, to. Oh, the You'll second you out. leave, we'll be on his Oh, you have to check out his Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> He's so, he just did a self-portrait. He's got a big mustache like this. He's like my oh, little Picasso. Wow. Oh, my God. Does he but, live in Brooklyn? The, Yes. I knew it. Yeah, of course he lives in Brooklyn because he has more space to put his paintings. He's got these huge paintings. I go, Noel, did you clean your kitchen? He goes, Mom, there's a painting over it. And then he goes, okay. Oh, it's amazing. Do you live in Manhattan? I do. You do? Do you live, um, do you care? Upper East. Upper East. Okay. Do you have a favorite um, restaurant here? I, I know everyone's always, like, whenever co- people come to New York, yeah. they always want to know, like, what the, uh, yeah, the right? place is. Mm-hmm. Well, they have to go to the Regency for cocktails, of course. Of course. Okay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I love Italian food because mm-hmm. I used to live in Milan, so I love Bella Blue. Bella Blue. Uh, it's on the Upper East Side, which is amazing Italian food. Um, Caravaggio, there's... Um, Oh, Il Campanino, which is delicious Italian, mm-hmm. Upper East Side. And then I love Avra. I love Greek food, too. Oh, okay. The I fresh like fish. Mm, mm. Amazing. There's one right next to 30 Rock. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have to hit all these Avra? Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah. I, knew, I knew you'd have the spots. Yes. <laughs> I'll have to ask for personal reasons. <laughs> of course she does. Do you want to play our game? Yeah, so we have a, uh, a game. Obviously, money can't buy you class. Right. So there's some things in life that are classy and some things that but are trashy. But it can buy you mm-hmm. it could buy you something on Uber Eats. Don't That's forget. Good. <laughs> oh, I love that. Did you I love that? That was so good. Yes. That was incredible. <laughs> Wasn't that good? It I really it. was. What a great concept. It was so, so smart. smart. So, so smart. smart. Now, and now I, I should be bag. now I should be doing feeling Chobani, <laughs> feeling Chobani, <laughs> and it feels so good. That's good. <laughs> um, so we have a little game. It's classy or trashy. We're gonna list off a a word or an item or a thing or a place, mm-hmm. and you say whether it's classy or trashy. Mm-hmm. We're gonna start off with Ozempic. Ozempic. Mm-hmm. Classy. It sure is classy. It's hard to get your hands on. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's incredible. Well, like they say, never, never too thin, never too rich. Mm-hmm. <laughs> classy. Classy. Okay, next, Miami. Oh, mm-hmm. that can swing both ways. I know. You know, I have friends who have a yacht outside of their home, so mm-hmm. it's classy, and uh, it can be trashy too. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. kind of middle of the road. Yeah, yeah Miami is a tricky one. It is. It's, it's, it's a tricky who one. You know. It depends who you know. Mm-hmm. So when I go, I hang out with the Housewives of Miami, so it's always classy. Oh, you've always classy. On. We are the trashy part of Miami. Yeah, we, <laughs> Stop. We, we cause some troubles. Um, awesome. Like like this third word, uh, vapes. 
vapes are classy. Classy? Yes. Oh, good Ooh. to know. Thank yeah. God. I also yeah, yeah, I think cigarettes are classy, too. So. Oh, cigarettes are <laughs> A skinny cigarette is skinny. so hot. Well, come on. Like a little skinny menthol. It's like an after dinner I mint. know. Oh, my gosh. I love you. No, I want a cigarette. <laughs> um, TikTok. TikTok. Um, TikTok. It can be kind of trashy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's hard to find classy. There's more cla trashy than classy. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. think? I, I, I do agree. I, yeah. I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of um, trash You're right. on TikTok. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rather than clash. Um, brand deals. Brand deals? Well, that's classy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's a good brand. Well, if it sure. gets a good brand. It depends if you're a sellout. Right. Well, but no, it depends on the class. brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would do a brand deal for something trashy. Yeah, me too. Right. <laughs> I mean, for me, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I was saying that um, I should be d like doing like a Hawk and Dolls commercial. Like, Rich, oh, decadent. That's so good for you. Creamy. Oh my God. Hagen Das. Hagen Das. das. You I hear her? I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. Rich and creamy. I can see me on the back of a yacht in a lounge chair eating out of the out of the container of Hagen Das. With a golden spoon, Hagen Das. With a with a silver spoon, darling. Oh, a silver spoon. Uh, yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> we will be eating Klondike bars. <laughs> I'm soft on the inside. There's nothing like a Klondike bar. He's a Klondike bar. What would you do? Oh, uh, what for would a you do for a Klondike? You're right. You see, you know Klondike better than me. <laughs> um, karaoke. Karaoke. God. Mm. That can be trashy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets trashy, trashy fast. It gets yeah. trashy Real really fast, fast depending yes. on how much people are drinking. Oh, oh my course. gosh. <laughs> and if you're not drinking while you're doing karaoke, there's, there's going to be a problem, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to go home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be classy. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. True. <laughs> uh, um, tattoos. Classy. Classy. Look Classy. at my lotus flower. I got that when we went to um, um, uh, where the witches are from. Salem? Salem. Oh, Salem. Salem. Remember the trip We're we did to Salem? Yeah. Oh, I love Salem. Yeah, I've, mm. I've never been. Really? Yeah. What? I love it. Crazy. It's so spooky during Halloween oh, season. My God. I love it. I love Boston. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a show in Boston, by the way. Oh, also. my God. Yeah, I have a huge lineup of shows coming up. So. Awesome. Yeah, um, Boston's one of them. Yeah. Hell, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, we love Boston. Um, Sonia. Sonia. <laughs> she's classy. Classy. When she's not trashing. <laughs> there there goes the all, drinking though? story again. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when her tooth fell out at a party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> she's incredible. <clears throat> I know, right? Mm -hmm. That's class. That's class. Mm -hmm. Um, how about when your friend's not inviting you to the Rangers game? Oh. Trashy. <laughs> Trashy. <laughs> well, as you've seen, we both just went to the Rangers game. I don't know if you know that. We were on the Jumbotron, oh, and they played a went. clip. Okay, perfect. Uh, Kelly finally invited me to the Rangers game is the good news. Finally, Kelly. And then they played a scene from the show of me complaining. About oh, that that's awesome. At the Rangers <laughs> game, and then they, they, they panned to us in the audience, which was that's fantastic. Good advertisement. It was so much fun. Oh, wow. that's incredible. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for Classy vs. Trashy. Yeah. yeah okay. You know? That's all we have for the episode. This was amazing. You're incredible. Uh, oh, my God. Thank you. so. That was so fun. Oh, I had yeah. so much fun. It Please went by so quick. It's easy. It's easy. Right? I'll read that right away. Mm. I think so. It's kind of needed. Like, yeah. In this, you or know. even if you just do an audio <clears throat> one, your voice is so <clears throat> soothing. Oh, oh thank gosh. you. Yeah. I know people say that all the time. Yeah. Last time I was with a girlfriend, we were just hanging out, and she fell asleep, literally. <laughs> she fell asleep. Her eyes were, like, kind of closing halfway. And then when I saw her eyes close, I was like, oh. I guess I'm done talking. And it's not like you're telling a boring story. You don't have boring stories. Just, no, just no, I was telling a voice. very interesting story, but my voice put her to sleep. She was really tired, let me put it that way. But um, thank you. You know, often when I'm walking down the street, people will hear me talking, and they're like, oh, my God, I recognize you from your voice. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's... It's unique voice. And that's why I think the, um, the, the Uber campaign was great, because, you know, who else can get away with, like... Mm -hmm. Money can buy you a class. I yeah. know. It can buy you a gift on Uber Eats. It's perfect. perfect. Right? That's the voice. It's, yeah. I, that's the voice that uh, tells me to get Uber Eats. Chocolate, caviar, night. champagne. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like Jet's, Jet's silhouettes, you know. <laughs> champagne in the sky. Oh, champagne in the sky. Fine premieres and fireworks every <laughs> single night. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Gold, diamonds, caviar. Life is but a dream. <laughs> Ah, this this next app I actually pay for, so you know I actually I really enjoy it. I just found out I've been paying for it this whole time, but I don't have to be because they're a sponsor of this show. And that is Factor, baby. Get started on your resolution with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning 
and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget frantic lunch preps and rushed dinners. Factors two minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant quality meals all delivered right to your door. Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what's on the schedule. Head to factormeals.com slash planbree50 and use code planbree50 to get 50% off. That's code planbree50 at factormeals.com slash planbree50 to get 50% off. Let's get back to the show. Well, sure you'll, you'll catch that at my show, girls. Oh, yes, we will. I'm so, I'm so excited. excited. Awesome. And Thank we dress you. to the nines, right? You dress. you dress to the nines, right, girl. Perfect. I can't wait. Thank show you up so in much. all your sequins and statement necklaces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. we got to get our necklaces. we got to get our necklaces. Oh, what, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to have that You're going to look great. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. There, oh, sorry. One last question. Do you ever get single, um, single straight men at your shows? Yes, but they're mm. usually with their wives. Oh, mm. Bummer. I know, right? <laughs> so but but I, but I do on occasion. <laughs> no, it never works out for me because because uh, <laughs> the women are. It's either the birthday party, the bachelorette party. Yeah. I have you know a lot of women at my shows, which I love. Us you know? too. Mm. All women. Usually. I love. You know what? Mm. There's nothing better than good girlfriends. It's, it's safe. the best. No yeah. man can can place. hold a yeah. candle to good girlfriends, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Incredible. So we'll see you at your show. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, girls. It's a pleasure. You have so many shows coming up, and people want to get tickets to your show because we're going. Mm -hmm. Where can we get tickets to your show? Uh, You just go to CountessLuann.com, and you'll see all my dates. And there we go. Easy. (laughs) 